Okay, Form Check Friday, number two. Thank you guys for posting up your videos. Um, I think what I'm going to do from now on is <clears throat> I'm going to clear the thread out on Wednesday. So I'm going to open it up for new submissions on Wednesday. That way, if you guys are working out on Monday or Tuesday and you want to get that video checked out, you can post it up on Wednesday and you'll probably have a chance of getting it in there without having someone load up Monday and Tuesday. If this thing gets popular, I don't know. I'm already surprised at the number of submissions you guys have already put up here. So this has been great and I'm looking forward to it every week and we'll just keep doing it. So let's get into it. Uh, I haven't seen any of these just like last week. It's going to be a little more fun that way. And uh, let's see what we got today. So we got, I think this is Ryan. And um, back on Twitter. Okay, so we got a bench press. Wait, I just want to read the one-year anniversary lifting session. Just missed just missed what would have been a PR at 190 by 5. I'll get it next week. All right, so we got 190 by... Okay, first of all, Ryan, get the collars off of the bar, okay? You do not... <laughs> You do not put collars on the bar when you're bench pressing ever. Okay, that's like a huge rule. And I know you have the safety set, so you're probably fine. But if one day, it's more about the habit. I don't want you in the habit of collaring the bar when you bench press. Because one day you might forget to put the safeties in. Or you might forget to move them after you're done squatting or something like that. And, or you might be at someone else's gym and, you know, you don't know exactly how the safeties work. And if you don't color the bar and you get stuck, at least you can roll to one side, have the plate slide off, roll to the other side, have the plate slide off. And, you know, you'll make a big mess, but you'll survive. If the plates are collared on the bar, you're screwed down there. So it's kind of like, I always tell my clients, it's like gun safety, you know, like before you hand someone a handgun or any gun, you you check it to make sure that it's not loaded. And then as soon as you hand it to them, the first thing they do is they check it to see if it's not loaded. And even though they just saw you check it, but it's just this habit that you want to get into where you just are always checking no matter what. And so same thing with collars on the bench press. You're probably going to be fine in this situation, but you're alone. You don't have a spotter. And I just don't want you to get in the habit of doing that in case one day you get into trouble. All right, enough about that, enough lecturing. <laughs> Let's see the bench press. So I can already tell my guess right now is that your grip is too narrow, um, but we'll see what happens when you take it out. I'm gonna assume that it's a little narrow. Yeah, so if we look at your forearm, on the way down, it's kind of at an angle like this. And what we're looking for when the bar, you know, when you're for when the bar is touching your chest is that you have vertical forearms right because we want to drive up in a straight line so you don't want to be like this you don't want to be like this both of these things actually reduce the range of motion of the movement right so that's why power lifters will take really wide grips because it actually shortens the distance that the elbow has to travel same thing if you bring your hands close together for like a close grip bench press that also shortens the distance the elbow has to travel with forearms vertical right? We get the maximum amount of travel with the elbows. And so we have a full range of motion exercise, which means we're working more muscle mass, right? So a lot of times competitive powerlifters will train narrow. And then as they get closer and closer to the meat, they'll start bringing their grip wider and wider um, because it's a competition and the less distance you have to move the bar, the more weight you can lift and they're trying to win. But for general strength training purposes, we want a full range of motion. We want to work everything as much muscle mass as possible over the longest range of motion. So we want a grip that actually has, when the bar is on the chest, the forearms are vertical. Okay, if you guys can see that, kind of like that, not like this. So here's my quick tip for setting up, uh, establishing a fairly accurate bench press grip. If you take your thumb and you put about a finger width, right, between the edge of the center knurling right and your thumb tip so about so you see about a finger width worth of knurl right that's about 
on both sides. That's about the right grip for most people. So stick your thumb out when you set your grip up, you know, line it right up with the edge of the bar and then move it out like a finger width and then try that and have someone come down or film yourself right from the front. So you can look when you bring the bar all the way down to the chest, are your forearms straight up and down or are they like this? So yours are, you're not bad, but there is a little bit of a angle to your forearm. So just widen your grip a tiny bit and let me see if I can back up. We can look at it. Yeah. It just looks like you probably need to come out another inch or two. So measure one inch or sorry, one finger width between the tip of your thumb and the edge of the knurl, both sides, and you'll probably be about right. Okay. So let's go back and look at how the movement's going. <clears throat> it's good. It's a little high on the chest. Okay. So when you, when you bring the bench press down, you want to be touching kind of like the base of your sternum right here. So kind of like a little bit below the nipple. All right. So you'll have your chest up and the bar is going to move at an angle, right? It's going to come from right over your shoulder joint down to here, right about here. And then back up like that. So you're touch It looks like you're touching a little bit too high on the chest. Okay. <laughs> Now we're getting a little bouncy. Uh, oh God, I'm, you're making me nervous with those colors. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, just in terms of general movement here, I, let me see what you're doing here. The first rep, the cadence is pretty good. You're taking your breath, you're getting tight, you're lowering it in a controlled manner. But then as you get tired, you, I mean, that, that rep, it, you almost drop the bar on your chest. So you want to think it's a controlled descent. You want to think about you're pulling the bar down to your chest under control and then you're firing it up. If you, in order to drop the bar that quickly, you have to loosen up, right? You've got to allow your, it's like falling into the bottom of a squat. You just have to drop. And to do that, you've got to loosen up your muscles. Well, if you loosen them under load, you can't tighten them again. You got one shot to create tension in your body and that's before you start the rep, right? So you want to create as much tension and tightness in your body as you can on every lift. And then you want to keep that tension and just move the bar, right? Under control, just move the joints that need to move, keeping everything real tight and then exploding on the way up. This is not just about bench pressing. This is about squatting, dead, everything, tension, the whole time, anytime you get loose, right? You, you're not gonna be able to retighten and that muscle isn't gonna help you anymore. So you had it right on the first couple reps, take a big breath. So fix your grip, right? Take a big breath and then control descent. Like you're pulling the bar down to you. Once you touch, fire it up, okay? On the way up, it can be a lot more explosive. Obviously when it's heavy, it's gonna be slow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so try that. All right. Every rep, you're going to reset the start position. You lock it out, take a big breath, chest up, shoulders back, and then bring it down under control and then fire it up and then reset that start position. Big breath, chest up, shoulders back, bring it down. You can hang out here in the bench press a lot. So don't panic, right? When your joints are locked, you can hang there all day and not really get tired. Okay. So you've got, so don't, you know, don't rush your reps. Take the time to reset the first rep for every lift of every exercise, but particularly in the bench press, you're good here for a while. So once you get to lock out, take a little break, take a breath, get tight, and then go. All right, try it with a wider grip. Let me know how that goes. We'll check it out next time. All right, what do we got? So we got a YouTube one. Let's see. All right, am I gonna be able to pause this? Oh, the pause is up here. Sorry guys, I'm just checking it out. Okay. Hip drive's getting better. 
across the set. Because he needs it. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you're getting a little bit... Um, as you come up, the, the overall is pretty good. Um, as you're coming back up from the rep, you're, from the bottom, excuse me, your weight seems to be shifting a little bit forward onto your toes and you're getting out of your hips a little too early. So we've talked about in other videos, the goal with the squat is lean over, right? Right away, establish this back angle and then keep it all the way down, all the way up. That back angle doesn't change until you get to the top where you kind of leaned over in the first place and then you finish by standing up. So you set your back angle all the way down, all the way up, right? And where a lot of guys go wrong is they get they get out of the bottom, they hit that little bounce at the bottom and they start driving up and then it starts to get hard and they just try and stand up. And when you stand up, like we've talked about before, you kill your hip drive. So the coaching cue that I always end up yelling is <clears throat> lean over, and stay leaned over on the way up. Stay leaned over as long as you can on the way up and you'll be able to tap into your hips a little bit more. Let's watch this again, see what we got. What is this? Okay. That one was a little shallow it looks like. Sometimes it's hard to tell with the camera angle but that's pretty good. He's, you, if you watch his shoulders, you're just going to see him lift his chest a little earlier. So he's hanging on and then right about there. Yeah. So when you hit that sticking point, I'm going to pause this before you do the last one. When you hit that sticking point, right, going down is easy. Gravity takes care of down. If you get your knees shoved out real hard and you allow yourself to go deep enough, you'll get that bounce as a sort of natural stretch reflex. So that's not that hard, right? Then the hard part of the lift is after that bounce. So after you get that little pop up, then you got to start doing the work. And usually a two or three inches out of the hole is where you're going to hit the sticking point, right? And that's where people have the tendency, when you hit that little sticking point a few inches up, it's like you got to make a choice. Are you going to keep driving your hips up or are you just going to try and stand up? And the tendency that a lot of people have is as soon as it starts to get grindy, they just try and throw their shoulders back and stand straight up. And you can get away with that with a weight that's not that hard, right? Uh, but it's going to limit how far you can take your squat because what you need to learn how to do is hit that sticking point and keep driving with the hips, okay? Keep the back angle consistent and drive your butt up a little higher before you start getting out of the hips. The other thing is you want to come out of the hole right out of the bounce with enough speed to what they call drive through your sticking point right you want to come you want to pop it and then hit the gas right so you got enough momentum carrying you through those couple inches where it starts to stick right so we'll watch this last rep see what we lean over drive your butt up yeah and then right there as soon as the the chest lifts you see the knees kind of pull forward Right, so that, that's a clear signal that he's getting out of his hips a little early. So basically, I mean, this is a very good squat. These are very common issues, minor things you gotta fix, but if you learn to do it, you're gonna lift more weight. So what I want is try and lean over a little bit more, get your knees out, right? That looks pretty good. Take it down and then put a little bit more speed into it from about two inches above the bottom right? As soon as you get real close to the bottom, speed it up a little bit. Let yourself sink into that stretch reflex and, and get a little bit more rebound out of, out of it and then just go. And like, I want more speed out of the bottom. So this is easier said than done. Obviously you're the one with a bunch of weight on your back. So, but what I want you to think about is, you know, imagine that you have, uh, you know, the nitrous button in the car, right? And you're cruising along and you got to figure out, all right, when am I going to hit that button and go? You don't have to worry about it on the way down. That's all about just keeping it controlled. And you don't have to worry about it, you know, when you hit that bounce, because that's going to take care of itself. If you go all the way down and keep your knees shoved out, that'll just happen. So that little, you got to hit the button 
right after the bounce. Just go, like fire it up a little more. And I think what you're doing is trying to control it very well so you don't get off and lose your balance, which is good. But I want a little bit more juice out of the hole, right? And, you know, just give it a shot. Try it on your warm-up sets. Think about going down and exploding out of the bottom, right? And just practice it and see if it helps. Overall, very good squat. You know, just stay leaned over a little longer and try and put a little bit more emphasis on the hip drive. Get a little bit more aggressive with the drive up, okay? Thanks for submitting that one. Very good lift. Let's move on. <clears throat> okay. Greg! Greg! Okay, how is Greg doing? Greg's got his headshot as the little as the little icon. All right, here we go. Good. Oh, you've got those Asics, right? Those those Santana lifting shoes. All right. All right, so if you watch the back of Greg's head, every rep, as soon as he starts to drive up, you're going to see his head go back. Let's see if he does it on the last one. If I'm... Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let this play again. <clears throat> head position and chin position dictate what happens to your back angle. So if you lift your chin, you're going to lift your chest. And if you lift your chest you're gonna kill your hip drive, right? This is what we talked about on the last video. So head is neutral the entire time. You're holding an orange right here or, or a tennis ball, right? So nothing from the top of my head to my hip moves. None of this happens ever. It just, the whole segment just leans over, right? I'm not doing this on the way down, right? I'm not arching back like this on the way down. And on the way up, I'm not letting my chin lead me out and have me lift my chest because it's going to kill my hip drive. Okay, so that's a glaring little error right here. Let's see. Depth looks pretty good. You've got a little bit of knee slide in here. Let me see. Let me pay attention to that. Yeah. So let me see if I can get my little pen out. There you go. All right, it's hard to oh, it's hard to pause these things and use the pen, but let me see if I can do it. Oh, I can just use the space bar. Sorry guys, I'm still learning how to use this software. All right, so Greg's knees. Oh, now I won't let me do it because, but we're looking yeah, so if you want to, like, check out his knees, you can see that line right there. I think if I just hold it. There you go. It's giving me a hard time. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's pause this. So, again, this is going to be a common theme in these videos is knees. So there's only a couple issues that happen with people's squats. And so the more of these we do, the more you're going to hear them over and over again. Um, so knee slide is a big one of them, right? And that, and we talked about that in the last video. When you squat, you lean over and you establish not only your back angle, but your knee position. So by the time you're halfway down, your knees should be as far forward and out as they're ever going to be in the squat by about the halfway point of the descent, right? So after that, your knee travel stops. You have leaned over, you've shoved them forward, you've shoved them out. They are over the toes somewhere and they're, and then they, they're frozen in place. And the rest of the movement from the halfway point down is your hips reaching back, right? Cause if we leave the knee here and the hips stretch back, now we're stretching out all that muscle mass in our posterior chain, engaging it. And that's where that bounce comes from. <clears throat> so you got to establish the knee position by the halfway point. So when I'm watching a squat like this, what I'm looking for is where does his knee go by the halfway point and then does it continue to travel forward at all? And if we watch his knees again, as this thing resets, these YouTube shorts don't let me like fast forward or 
scrub or anything. So we just gotta. All right, so we're just gonna pay attention to his knees and you'll see them kind of go out and then you'll see them go out more, or forward, I mean, not out. We can't see out. That one wasn't so bad. Yeah, there's just, it's not egregious, like, but what I want, what I'd like to see more of is his hips. That one was pretty good. There you go. Let's see the last one. Yeah, I mean, the more I watch it, the less I'm uh, offended I am by it. It's subtle. It's a little bit of knee slide forward. It's not really that big a deal. Um, overall, I think I just want you to focus on getting him forward. And then for the last couple inches of the rep, you're thinking about sitting back. So it may help to think about a little bit more weight on your heels at the bottom. Right now, remember I said the goal is even pressure on the balls and the heels, the balls of the feet and the heels, right? So we want an even pressure gradient all the way up, all the way down. But in terms of coaching and getting people to move correctly, sometimes we have to overcorrect. And so in this case, I don't want that knee slide to get any worse. So what I would tell Greg if I was standing there is sit back onto your heels a little more at the bottom, right? Lean over right away, shove your knees forward and out. And then by the halfway point, you're thinking about just get a little bit more weight on your heels. Like maybe if you're at the bottom, you're trying to like pick your toes up a little bit, not all the way back. So you fall over obviously, but just a little bit more weight back, a little more pressure on the heel than the toe. And it'll probably even things out. Um, and you know, we, we use that cue in the deadlift all the time. So again, middle of the foot's the goal, but a lot of people have a trouble, a tendency in the deadlift to be on their toes and the bar swings off their shins. So if we just cue them, Hey, get back on your heels a little more, then we get an even weight distribution. So let's watch this one more time to see if we pick anything out again. Keep that head motionless. Okay. This doesn't move at all. It's tucked. You're looking at the ground. Your chin is tucked the whole time. That'll help you keep your back angle a little bit longer. All right, let's see here. Lean over, knees out. Yeah. Yeah, that one, the second rep, he's got a little bounce off the knees. We want the bounce off the hips. Don't lift the chest. There see, you, you can see in a lot of these, as the weight gets, as the weight starts to feel heavier, um, and, you know, they start to get tired, they re the, the lifter's going to rely on that hip drive a little more because they have to, right? <laughs> It, the, the weight sort of forces you to do the movement correctly. This is why when we're coaching, we don't really, you know, I don't spend a lot of time correcting people's forms with an empty bar. It's like, what's the point? It's really hard to squat correctly with an empty bar. Once you get a little bit of resistance on there, things start to correct themselves because they have to. So overall, Greg, really good. Um, if you fix the chin and that little chin flick, I know it sounds like a small thing, but it's actually a really big deal. <laughs> And so if you just keep that chin tucked, looking down at the floor, it may help you. A lot of times, if I have a lifter who does that a lot, I'll move their gaze from, you know, several feet in front of you down to like one foot in front of your toes, real close. You're almost looking straight down and that helps to keep the chin locked in. And you'll find that when you do that, you're going to have more access to that hip drive also down and for the last couple inches you're back on the heels just a little bit and then you want to stay there on the way up right so sit back stay back on the way up and i think you'll be good to go overall very good squats all right let's keep going how are we doing here this might be the same one sorry if this is the same link yep it's greg again okay we'll go back um Okay, iCloud, we can see all the stuff. Is this gonna ask me to log in? <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. Do I have controls here? Oh, can I pause this? Oh yeah, okay, I just click on it. All right, so no hip drive already, we can see that. Again, we're looking at his knees and you see him, if you see him travel forward all the way down, Right, that's that's a problem. We want we want them to stop. Let's see if I can pause it and like scrub a little bit. So 
I want him, I want his knees kind of locked in place here. By the time, I mean, so by the time he's halfway down, right, that's where his knee is going to be. And if it moves past this line, then we got a problem. And you can see if we hit play, they keep going a little bit. They keep shooting forward a little bit. So that's, I mean, it's not terrible, right, in terms of the knee position. But anytime you're watching one of your lifts, and, you, and, you're, and you're paying attention to your knees and you just see them the entire way down. They're just moving forward and then they move back and then they move forward all the way down. That's wrong. They should move forward and stop uh, by, by about the halfway point. And then you're sitting back into the bottom. This is, I'm getting repetitive here, but you guys get the idea. So the cue is get your knees out over your toes, right? Forward and out faster, right away. Just lean over and shove them out right away as fast as you can. One of the things I'll do with a lifter in the gym is, I don't know if I can show you this, but I'll just stand next to them and I'll have them put their knee on my knee. So I'll put my knee, or excuse me, I'll put my leg in front of their toe and then I'll tell them, lean over and touch my knee with your knee right away, okay? And what we want is, let's see if I can demo. So if you're here, right? Instead of having the knees travel forward all the way down like that, we want them to go forward right away. Okay, so you're, you're set up and the first thing that happens is forward and out so that they're locked in this position right away and then we're just sitting back into the bottom as opposed to having them slowly travel forward all the way down and you bounce off your knees. So, <clears throat> I gotta get better at demoing stuff in here in this little tiny circle. <laughs> um, so, Lean over, get your knees locked forward right away, and then focus on sitting back into the bottom. All right, let me see if I see anything else while we're... Yeah, I think depth is a little, we're a little high. And that, so, right, so, <clears throat> we need about probably two more inches of depth so that the hip crease drops below. Let's see if we can, can I like manually thumb through these? No. Let me see if I can guesstimate about where the bottom is. All right. So let me get my little pen tool. So we got the hip crease, right? Let me get out of that. So what we want is kind of, that's terrible. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. We're, he's real close. And a lot of times the angle of the camera, right? If it's a little higher, a little low, it can be somewhat deceptive. You real close to depth. I think the issue the, or the reason that I'm not seeing it exactly is because of the forward knee travel. So if you, again, we talked about this in the last video. If you slide forward at the bottom, it feels like you're going deeper, right? Because the whole system is kind of collapsing forward into your knees, but it doesn't finish the, the, the lowering of the hips or the hip crease below the top of the kneecap, right? It's just like the bar's getting lower because you're squatting forward basically onto your toes versus keeping that whole system balanced and then right at the bottom, letting the hips, excuse me, don't change your back angle, letting the hips finish dropping down. So again, from the top, lean over, shove the knees forward and out right away. And then by the halfway point, knees are set, back angle set, and you're just focused on letting the hips, like letting the hips reach back, stretch out and dip, dip down and catch that bounce. Okay. So again, weight on the foot, right? You're thinking about weight on the foot. If you go down and you notice, hey, I'm shifting forward. Like I can feel the weight going a little bit more onto my toes. That probably means you're sliding forward on, you've got knee slide, right? The knee slide's pulling you forward onto your toes because you didn't get them where they needed to be soon enough. And they're gonna go there, right? Your knee has to get to a certain point relative to your toe or you're gonna fall. 
So if you put it there right away, then you can sit back and balance it out. If you don't get the knee there right away, it will pull you forward into the bottom all the way down to go to the place that it wants to be. If that makes sense. I'm kind of, so let's try this. Let's just see what we got here. So again, we got better hip drive on that one, right? (laughs) So if you watch this whole, every set that we've seen so far, the hip drive improves. So he's lifting his chest early because he's not that tired and he can get away with it, right? That one, no hip drive, just all standing up too soon. Got a little bit more there. And then I think this last one, yeah, much more consistent back angle. That one right there, that's what I'm looking for, okay? So if we watch that last rep, let me see if I can get it right. Oh, I missed it. Okay. If you watch the difference in his hips, how much they move from one rep to the next, that little pop right there at the end, that's what I want. Let me see if I can back up a little bit and we can see a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah, that last rep is great. So if we compare all the reps in the set, the last rep that he, where he's tired, he has to use more hip drive because it makes it easier. And so he's defaulting to actually the correct thing early in the set. The first few reps, you know, it, you can get away with murder. You can lift your chest because you've got the strength to do it. But when you get tired and you need proper form, right. Or if you're doing like a real heavy attempt, You've got to, you've got to, the only way it's going up is if you rely on the correct technique, which is to use your hip drive. So know that going in, right? So think about your sets and how you, and the errors that you commonly see and try and remember them. So, you know, you could say, I don't usually get into the correct hip drive until the second or last rep. So I'm going to make an extra effort early in in the set from rep number one to exaggerate the hip drive because I know I usually don't do do enough of it, okay? So that's what I would tell you. Rep number one, exaggerate the hip drive. Use it, right? Because again, if you do the lift correctly and as efficiently as possible um, from rep number one, now you're saving yourself gas for the later reps, right? If you, I'm sure you guys have all experienced this, but If you get off on rep one or two and you have to just, and you lift your chest too early and you just grind it out, you might fail on the later reps, right? Cause you just, you didn't have enough juice to do one wrong and like one real grindy one and still make it to the end, right? So if you get them efficient and correct from rep number one, now you're set up for rep number five where it's going to be hard cause you're tired, but as long as you do the movement correctly and as efficiently as possible, you have a shot at finishing the set. So this is all a long way of saying we need to use good technique all the time. Okay. Uh, let's do one more run through. So yeah, I would just say the main thing here is get those knees established, lean over and get the knees forward and out sooner, right away, jam the knees forward and then sit back into the bottom. And that's you're getting out of your hips a little too soon, right? Yeah, this is, and the problem with the issues with depth are going to get corrected when you focus on sitting back more. So once you get the knees set, open up the, shove them out real hard, and then you can sit back into the bottom, those depth problems are going to go away. So just like I gave Greg advice, think about, you know, as you're starting the rep and the knees are going forward and out, maybe the weight is on your toes a little bit. And then as you finish the descent, you're shifting back so the weight's on your heels. So you can think about toes, on toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels. Again, the goal is even the whole time, but sometimes thinking about, I'm gonna shove my knees out and get on my toes, and then I'm gonna sit back onto my heels. We're gonna balance it out in the long run. And um, yeah, you'll be fine. These are, you know, everything we're seeing here are very common, very minor issues that most people have, especially when you guys are training in a vacuum, like if you're training alone in your garage, it's really hard to know 
whether you're doing things right. And trust me, everything, <laughs> every error that you correct today, you know, in a month or two, you'll have something new and you just didn't even notice it and you'll post a video and we'll, we'll get it fixed. Okay. I got time for one more. I think we've been doing 35 minutes. Uh, here we go. Is this a noop again? Am I getting that right? Noop. Here we go. Wait, did he leave me a note? Um, you've already seen my squats twice. Please keep, uh, please keep my last video. Make the last video a priority. It's absolutely fine. Okay. So let's take a look at, we got, I, I just noticed we have one more after this. Go. Go. Reset this. Okay, let me kill the music. Okay. These are much better than last time. So, heads down. Depth looks, so last time his issue was that he was going like really deep and I told him to widen his stance a little bit. I can't really see your feet, but it looks like you have and it, you're, the depth is not, it's Pretty spot on. Head isn't moving as much. Keeping the chin tucked. Yeah, if you if we look at his back angle, it's staying fairly consistent all the way up. That one lifted a little early. I would have liked to see you hang on to your back angle a little longer. That one you got out of your hips way too soon. Let's see what we got. Eh. So we're lifting the chest a little too soon. Yeah, so you don't want to be opening up like a clamshell, right? You want to lean over and then stay leaned over all the way down. Okay, I think this video is just looping. Um, overall, much better than last week, okay? So what I would say is focus on the depth is good. So the stance, you must. I hope you widened it and it fixed it because the depth looks a lot better. The descent looks very nice. Your head isn't moving around. What I would say is... Focus on trying to hold on to your back angle longer on the way up, right? So, like I said before, lean over, stay leaned over longer, right? I, wherever you think you should start lifting your chest, push a couple more inches up before you allow yourself to do that, right? Keep looking at the ground and keep driving your hips up. And the other thing I want to nip in the bud real quick here is your upper back, your back position. So, um... I want it to be more arched. And I think last time we talked about arching it on the way down. Okay. So you need what we want your upper back to be tight, right? That bar, we want to bunch up the muscle mass. So the bar has a place to sit, right? So when you come out of the rack, <clears throat> I'm just making demo this, right? You walk out of the rack before you go down, you're going to take a big breath. You're going to puff your chest up, right? You're going to shrug up a little bit into the bar. So big breath. Right? So you're here, upper back's tight, proud chest, head down, and then we're just gonna lean over, right? Now the problem that you were having last time is that you were trying to do that, you were trying to set your upper back as after you had already started the rep. So you're here and then on the way down, you're flaring your chest up, trying to get it tight as you're moving. You don't wanna do any movement, any unnecessary movement while you're moving the weight. So for next time, I want you to make a, a better attempt at tightening your upper back before each rep. So it's like this, take a big breath, chest up, chin down, right? Elbows up, you gotta, you're shrugging up, creating all that, bunching up that muscle mass for the bar, nice and tight, and then you're gonna go down. And now as you come back up, that's gonna loosen up, right? Cause you're driving your hips and you're just not focused on it and you're not that good at this yet. So when you get to the top of the rep, you'll probably be a little bit collapsed in the chest. Your elbows will drop, right? So you need to retighten that before you go. So every rep of every exercise, you're gonna, you gotta go through the little reset procedure to get yourself in the correct position. Bench, squat, deadlift, every lift has a checklist that you go through to reestablish the correct start position. And if you just rush from one rep to the other rep and you don't get yourself back in that position, the rep's gonna be wrong and it's gonna be inefficient. You're gonna be sloppy and then you're gonna be tired, right? We talked about that in the last video. You're gonna be leaking power. So each rep, when you get to the top, go through the checklist. For you and for most people, 
Big breath, chest up, tight, holding your breath, and then you go. And then when you get back up to the top, take a breath, reset the chest up, elbows up position, hold it tight the whole time, and then just lean over, and you'll be good to go. So your back, basically your back looks kind of soft right now, and as these weights get heavier and heavier, it's just gonna be harder and harder for you to maintain a good arch position. So just think big breath, proud chest, right? Like you're showing off and then lean over and try and hold it tight the whole time. Okay. Almost like you're setting your back for a deadlift. Hopefully we'll get to see one of those sometime. Okay. Overall, very good. Much better than last week. We're moving in the right direction. Um, if there's another video in here, uh, I don't know if I saw it, but, um, okay. Uh, and last one there's, Oh, we got a little bit of text here. This guy put two videos up. Main one I'm questioning is the front squat. Ooh, front squats. Okay. I've been doing low bar squats forever. My right elbow has been complaining a lot lately between squat hand, the squat hand position and chin up. So I decided to try front squats. Day one of actually doing it. Worked up to one, six, five. Finished the workout. Got progressively worse. Couldn't bend up. Oh. Left lat. Came in over. Took two days to feel better. This morning, front squat again. Um, you're... I realize I'm not using lifting shoes. Good. Those are ordered. The second video is strongman sandbag over a bar. Okay. That'll be a new one for me. I'm not really a strongman guy. All right. Oh, you're in loom too. Cool. Fun. I hope it doesn't like stop what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see what we got here. So front squats. Okay, so let me watch this one. All right, so this is going to be probably not what you wanted uh, from me, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> so first of all, I don't really coach front squats. I mean, I have before. I know how to do them, um, but I don't program them because I don't really have a reason to. Um, I our whole, you know, the starting strength mentality is let's pick the version of the exercise that works the most muscle mass over the longest range of motion so we can lift the most weight. And the most muscle mass you can utilize is going to be with the low bar back squat. This is why everybody who trains all the variations of the lift can low bar more than they can high bar more than they can front squat because there's more muscle mass involved in that. And there's explanations for why that are beyond the scope of this video. But, um, so I want you to, I want you to back squat and, um, and I will talk a little bit about your technique for a second, but let me just see why you're not actually squatting. Right elbow has been complaining a lot lately between squat hand position and chin up. So I just said, okay, so that's the bigger issue here is I don't know exactly what's going on with your elbow, but it's very common. One of the big most common issues that we face with the low bar back squat is tendonitis, right? And it feels like an aching in your bicep. Usually it's on the inside medial, sometimes it's lateral, but you, and it gets pissed off when you squat and then you feel it a lot when you're uh, doing your second exercise, which is usually bench pressing or pressing. So I have a video on dealing with tendonitis. Um, I will try and link to it. If not, you can go to the Horn Strength YouTube channel and look up how to deal with tendonitis. And there's some strategies in there. The, the most important one for, or the one that, the first intervention that we make anytime someone starts complaining about elbow pain with the squat, for, with the low bar back squat, is switching from a thumbs on top grip, right? With your thumb on top of the bar like that, to a thumbs wrapped around grip. Okay, so we want your thumbs wrapped around the bar, kind of like you've got right there. This takes a lot of the, what causes that tendonitis is cranking on the bar. Okay. So, and a lot of times it's very subtle and hard to see, but if you'll see people go down and they relax their wrists and on the way up, they, so the, as they're squatting, they're rolling their wrists back and then rolling forward like that. And doing that 
a lot with a bunch of weight on your back pisses off your biceps tendon basically because you're cranking on the bar under load while you're lifting and it just it just irritates it and that's usually the cause of the problem again sometimes people will get tendonitis and it's very subtle it's just like a very subtle movement but in my experience that's the number one reason or the cause of that tendonitis is cranking on the bar the thumbs around grip prevents that from happening because we're going to allow the wrist to be bent already and the bar is just going to sit here and sit on the back and you with the wrist already bent and the thumbs wrapped around it's a lot harder to crank on it it can still happen but what what usually happens is people just let the bar sit in their hands and they stop worrying about it with the thumbs on top you see this tendency to roll the bar up and down um so i would say 60 percent of the time maybe more just switching to the thumbs around grip eliminates the insult and the tendonitis can start to heal so that's always anytime i have a client who starts complaining about elbow pain first thing we do switch to a thumbs around grip and that gets rid of the problem 60 to 70 percent of the time Okay, so I would do that because I want you squatting. I want you back squatting. Um, it's going to be better for your overall development. And um, did you say, and you got, you said you got a pain in your lat from doing this. Now, in terms of your form here, right, it's a little wonky. Uh, I guess that's the technical term. Uh, first of all, the bar, you've got the bar like down here, right? And... It, so you can see that like you're struggling to hold it because it's actually sitting down here on like your upper arm. And so it's pushing down on you. A, a properly performed front squat, you're going to, it's like basically you're racking a power clean. And the power clean racks on the deltoids, on the meat of the deltoids up here, right? There's a shelf up here. So when, when, when you're trying to teach someone how to power clean and, and get to feel that position, Right, you can actually have them just hold their arms out like this, and the bar will sit right up here, okay, on this meat, and there'll be a space. You'll be able to slide your hand underneath the bar here, because when the deltoids are bunched up like that, the bar actually rests on the meat. And so when people are cleaning and they don't learn to shove their elbows up and rack it correctly, they get all these red marks on their upper chest and <laughs> like clavicle because. Um, you know, the bar's just slamming into them. So instead of landing on this stable position here, okay? So number one in this issue is you've got to get that bar closer to your throat and your elbows should be pointed up, okay? Like think about pointing your elbows straight at the wall the whole time, all right? If they're down here like this, it's everything else about this movement is going to be wrong because... Your back, you're going to be unable to maintain a proper upper back position with the chest up tight, right? You want, again, like all the other lifts and the back squat, you want your upper back extended, right? And your whole torso just rigid. And if the weight is pulling you down, you're just going to get into this rounded position and everything else is going to go to shit. So... I'd say the, if you want to keep front squatting, the one, the tip that I'll give you is get that bar closer to your throat. Uh, you may have to, you know, if, I mean, it looks like you're pretty flexible. A lot of people can't grab the bar like that, but in your case, um, you, you can think about stacking your hands on the outsides of your shoulders, right? The elbows need to be up and the bar needs to sit on the meat of your deltoids. Again, you should be able to hold that weight just like this. So if you would know it's in the right place, if you had the bar where it is right now and you did this, your arms would just collapse. But if it's in the right place, your arms can sit out like this. The bar will sit across your chest or your uh, shoulders, deltoids perfectly. Okay. So that's number one. And that's going to allow you to keep a more extended upper back, right? And keep that torso rigid and not rounding. So I would work on those if you want to continue to do these, but more importantly, I would, um, you're also going a lot deeper than you need to on these, right? So that may be that your, <clears throat> your knees aren't out enough, but overall I would start by fixing the
the grip and the bar position and then see what happens from there. Or try low bar squatting again with a thumbs around grip if you haven't been doing that. And um, if you want to post in the thread it or thread it in the Reddit uh, forms about tendonitis, let me know more about what's going on. We could talk about that. I can give you some other strategies. Check out that YouTube video. And I guess we got to see this sandbag thing just for fun, guys, since we're here. This is, I like you. This is a very nice gym. <laughs> God bless you, man. <laughs> There's like no part of me that wants to do that. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> um, right on, man. Like, yeah, I dig it. The strongman's. I never got into the strongman stuff, really. I just, you know. But that seems like a, seems like a hell of a workout. All right. Um, you know what? I want to see, Matt, I want to see your low bar squat. So um, you can send it to me or just jump in on Wednesday and post it up and we'll take a look and see what's going on. See if we can help you with that elbow because overall, you know, you, you want to do your low bar squats. You're going to build more muscle mass that way. And you know, one of the things, the good test for this is if we take your, if we put a hundred pounds on your low bar back squat and you don't front squat at all from, you know, whatever your max is today and we just keep driving up your low bar squat your front squat's going to go up too. We don't even have to train it, right? Because it's working more total muscle mass. So it's a better use of your time, in my opinion. If you like front squatting, I'm not saying don't front squat. It's a good, you can do it for light days, stuff like that. It, there's definitely nothing wrong with it. But if we're going to pick one version for the program, I want to make sure that you're at least doing the low bar squat. And then if you want to add front squats on light day or something like that, totally not knocking front squats <laughs> across the board. But okay. Um, that's, we did almost an hour, 52 minutes today. Thank you guys again for posting. Uh, like I said, I'm going to clear the thread, uh, and, or sorry, I'm going to make it active on Wednesday. So that'll give the guys who train Monday and Tuesday an opportunity to get their videos ready, post them up on Wednesday. And I think I could probably do about five, you know, I think an hour is pretty good. Um, and, um, thank you guys for participating again. And being a part of the community, this is, it continues to <laughs> blow my mind that, you know, you guys are in there engaging and um, talking about whiskey and, you know, all this stuff. So very cool. I'll see you guys on the Reddit board form, whatever we want to call it. And um, talk to you soon. Thanks.